All right, it's day 32 of growing bok choy from seeds. It's the third episode of this plant growing series. As you can see from the thumbnail, there's been a lot of progress. But on day 32, you can see the plants are just marginally bigger. They're sort of angled like caltrops. The first true set of leaves are bent down for whatever reason. And then you've got everything else pointing up. So the interesting development here is there are flower buds developing and that looks very reminiscent of other brassica genus species. So that's very interesting. Uh, one of my viewers said it's going to flower if I grow these in the summer. And that's exactly what's happening even though this balcony is east facing and it only gets morning sunlight for maybe four and a half hours. Um, I haven't exactly been waking up and checking at the exact moment at which the sunlight hits this balcony. But it's pretty much 7.30 and between 11.30 a.m. to noon it just goes away. So the sun goes over the balcony out of reach of these plants. So it's day 40 and there's a bloom of yellow flowers. So this is a lot of flowers on the way as you can see. There's a lot of buds there. And I can't wait to see what the rest of the blooms look like, but you can already see a good preview here. They're yellow flowers, and a lot of insects will like these, I'm sure. So those bees that were exploring and resting on my bok choy leaves in the last episode were pretty clairvoyant. They knew somehow that uh, these were going to flower. So it seems like for all of my plants that flower, the bees arrive in the weeks before and sometimes you have hummingbirds checking out uh, what's on my balcony as well. So I typically don't see that many hummingbirds but I've seen bees um, just kind of groom themselves and check out this. Maybe there's something in terms of uh, UV light. I don't think bees really rely on scent so much as they do vision. So there must be something different or you know, characteristic about the plants that are attracting them prior to the flowering even, even though I don't see any extra floral nectaries. So this is uh, developing pretty well. Um, I've decided I'm not going to start just cutting off a bunch of leaves and harvesting. I know the packet said 30 days until harvest. That's somewhat true. I could have just started eating leaves and these lush petioles uh, that are characteristic of bok choy. But I'm showing you the undersides of these leaves because there's really not any sign of spider mites that have plagued the other plants. And I've sprayed a little insecticide on the other plants. Uh, I bought something new. I threw away that jug of uh, triazicide that was years old that I used uh, for all my balcony plants over the last few years in the older apartment. So I had to get something new, but I made sure not to spray this plant, and I expect to see lots and lots of bees soon. So recently I released a spate of funny videos, uh, humorous videos or satirical videos, whatever you want to call them, uh, parodies. Uh, one on how to prepare an avocado uh, based on how tons of people complained about how I chopped my avocado in the 2016 avocado growing series and a longer version of the peacock joust video that's my most popular video of all time by views and also one making fun of myself for growing essentially fungus gnats from mango seeds so occasionally i will test the waters and see what works out there but so far only my most uh, loyal fans have reacted to that and maybe the american audience um i don't know if those will be a big hit but I think it was worth a try and like so many other videos on my channel it just takes a long time for things to gain any traction I'm not one of those uh, really big youtubers with 10 million subscribers and everything I release will be a hit so it takes a long time for me to evaluate whether things will work and that's just the way it is in the meantime I'll keep chugging out content as scheduled like this but I just don't see how I can work in humor to a 10 or a 12 minute video uh, like this. It's kind of hard unless something happens where I can just throw in some jokes. But um, 
yeah, it's it's kind of difficult to do all of that. Um, so it's day 42 here, and there are bees foraging in the morning. It's a nice sight. It's uh, very interesting. It brings a little bit more life to the balcony, uh, other than just plant life, of course. So they come in the morning, and they're gathering pollen and nectar, and they basically come maybe two or three at the most at a time. And then when the sun shifts and it's past noon, then this balcony doesn't receive light anymore, so they don't come. It said that bees and wasps can recognize human faces and so on. I imagine they have pretty good visual spatial memory. Despite having very limited brain size, they somehow know where to go. And maybe the bees investigating a few weeks ago were just somehow marking the plants for future visits. So I think they rely much more on their sense of sight rather than smell unlike other animals and they fly over large territories so they basically have to identify uh, where the flowers are or are going to be uh, over the next few weeks and come back every day to forage like this so the watering doesn't really bother them and by day 47 you can see the inflorescences have really shot up uh, some of these plants are really tall every few days I'm actually rotating the pot this isn't its normal position. I put it on the Lazy Susan so I can spin it around and show you everything. But it's getting more and more beautiful. It's a lot more interesting than it was at the beginning of this episode. I'll give you that. And these inflorescences, um, I'm pretty sure people don't eat these. I think people grow these during the winter, farmers do, or agribusinesses. And it seems like I'm growing it sort of in the wrong season and it's flowering. I don't know how it can tell so well that it's summer. Is it just due to the temperatures? But if you grew it in different latitudes, the temperatures would vary or at different elevations. But somehow it knows, even on this limited sun balcony that only gets morning sun, that it's time to flower and go. Or maybe I just waited way too long because it is day 47 after all so basically it should have been harvested a, a while ago and since I planted them far too close to each other they don't have that much room for foliage growth I think plants can generally get a sense for how uh, densely they're packed in and if they're all growing next to each other like that and their roots are all bumping into each other and intertwined then they're not going to get very big so I don't know what caused this huge lengthy shoot up of lanky inflorescences maybe it's just because I watered a lot so I think the capacity for soaking up more water and utilizing more water is now a lot greater than it was in the past and unlike my sweet banana pepper pot which looks pretty sad in comparison even though it started at the same time this can take a lot more water you can see how plump and fat and succulent these uh, petioles and stems are so it looks like a lot of water can fit in there so it's not just storing water uh, underground it's also storing water in the shoots as well but there's not a whole lot of foliage I bet I could eat all of this and stir fry it all and in just one meal so I've decided I'm just gonna keep this going and let this put on a flower show to feed the bees I haven't sprayed this with any insecticide I've seen the occasional small web with a tiny spider at the very base in the early few weeks of this growing series but I don't see any bugs I don't see spider mite infestations or anything um, this is a very hardy unexpectedly a vegetable compared to everything else so it's day 50 and we have yet more growth this just looks like a dense mini forest of bok choy and it's a lot more aesthetic than I thought it would be uh, there are some rotting original true leaves that were just lying on the soil and got wet from successive waterings but no bugs so this is actually one of the hardiest plants next to the Joshua tree on my balcony and the other ones the Sweet banana pepper I saw had some spider mites already 
and the raspberry plant. I just had to blast with this new insecticide spray can that I bought, so that kind of burned some leaves. And you'll see that in an episode that's coming out in you know a few days or weeks. So yeah, we got a lot of flowers. We got continuous flower production, but also lots of these short-lived flowers are shedding petals, and the petals get all over the balcony well maybe not all over it's it's not a huge mess or anything but i can definitely see petals and find petals in the joshua tree plant next to this and some of the other pots as well so yeah it's not a huge mess um it could be a lot worse but this is uh it's a nice treat to see all these flowers and have bees stop by they're not out there foraging every day or every hour that I'm looking out onto the balcony, but this is a nice aesthetic treat. I think instead of eating these leaves, I'll just let this go and see where the life cycle takes it. Every few days I'm rotating the pot to ensure more even growth, although the growth is so fast now that it's sort of hard to keep it even. Um, but I'm very grateful for the fact that these just shoot straight up. They don't do annoying things like bend over and fall over the rail into the sides like my many other vine series or the raspberry cane series so that's kind of a hassle so this is very low maintenance easy to grow plant and I can't wait to see what happens over the following few days and weeks um, how tall can this get or is that pretty much the size that it'll be um, so stay tuned for at least one more episode of this and see what happens. I'm watering as deep as possible now. I don't think I've ever watered this much. But it seems like the last deep watering uh, got a really good response for the day 47 uh, clip of this video. So it's been really refreshing to have a plant growing series that goes on without a hitch until the end. Thanks for watching.